Thank you very much for joining me today for Tea with Julia. I'm delighted and honoured to be in Gilbert and George's studio with them um, in Fournier Street, London, where they've lived and worked for 50 years. Art for All is a belief that underpins Gilbert and George's art. Gilbert and George began creating together in 1967 when they met at St Martin's School of Art, and from the beginning, in their films and living sculpture, they appeared as figures in their own art. The artists believe that everything is potential subject matter for their art, and they've always addressed social issues, taboos, and artistic conventions. Implicit in their art is the idea that an artist's sacrifice and personal investment is a necessary condition of art. They have depicted themselves as naked figures in their own pictures, recasting the male nude as something vulnerable and fragile, rather than as a potent figure of strength. The backdrop and inspiration for much of their art is in the East End of London, where Gilbert and George have lived and created art for nearly 50 years. From street signs to ginkgo trees, from chewing gum stains to the on the pavements, to vistas of urban grandeur and decay, their work is both an ongoing portrait of the city and a reflection of the human condition. Gilbert and George have confronted many of the fundamental issues of existence, sex, religion, corruption, violence, hope, fear, racial tension, patriotism, addiction, and death. To quote them, our subject matter is the world. It is pain, pain. Just to hear the world turning is pain, isn't it? Totally, every day, every second. Our inspiration is all those people alive today on the planet, the desert, the jungle, the cities. We are interested in the human person, the complexity of life. So, here we are. Thank you so much for having me. Great introduction. <laughs> um, and how amazing that you've been here living in this neighbourhood for 50 years. More. More than 50 More. years. More. George already in 64. 64. God, that's extraordinary. You see how old we are. <laughs> 71. So we started making the pictures as we make them now at four. So next year is 50 years of pictures. 50 minutes of pictures. But the first, we can say, the first living structure that was already in 68 in St. Paul College, at St. Martin School of Art, and then and we went to all, what do you call, we took it all over Europe, America, Australia, all over the world, that we became the, the artwork, we became the living sculpture that could speak as feeling, not like a stone sculpture, as a human being sculpture that has feelings. It's extraordinary. And your relationship, both uh, in a personal capacity and also in a professional capacity, has blossomed and thrived uh, throughout that period. And how is it that you've remained so connected th throughout this time? Because, you know, we just had the example of the, the virus and the lockdown when people have been under great strain for many, many reasons, including the personal relationships. And yet you have you had this unbelievably productive um, an exciting and stimulating relationship for, or for decades, six decades or more. We, th we think that part of the secret is that we fell in love with the viewer of art rather than with art. So that we believe a de one of the definitions of our art is the friendship that is formed between the viewer and the picture. What they take home from the museum or the gallery. What they talk about it to their family or friends. That's the, the basis. The effect, we believe, that the world should be a little bit different because we make our pictures. It was quite exciting because in 1968, when we, were, we had to leave our school, that's when life starts. Before that, it's just entertaining ourselves, getting drunk in the evening. But then, when we were alone in the street and without the studio, without money, and we still wanted to be artists, because the day that I was born, I always wanted to be just an artist, nothing else, in George as well. So we had to invent a new way of being artists, and we only had ourselves, so we created a living sculpture. 
that had what you call that is able to have full of different ways of seeing the world and we were able to make even what you call create new ways of expressing ourselves we are made new forms to express ourselves but the living sculpture really brought you to incredible prominence it brought you commercial success international acclaim could you tell that amazing story of how you weren't included in an, in an exhibition and then made an intervention that was so dramatic it was it can never be forgotten because we always remember the day when we knew that there was an international traveling art exhibition called when attitude becomes form which felt like our kind of art and so we were very excited because we knew the person who would be selecting the British entry for that show and so we were very excited that we were about to launch ourselves internationally through this amazing exhibition at the Institute for Contemporary Art and then to our amazement we weren't selected so we were cast down into an amazing doom and unhappiness and misery we thought this one opportunity has passed us by and we thought maybe we could rescue it what could we do what could be done about it the only thing we could do would be to gate crash the private view as the living sculptures, which we did. We stole the show entirely. And at the, towards the end of the evening, a young man came up to us and said we didn't know who he was. He, he was the most famous European art dealer of that time. And he said, my name is Conrad Fisher. You do something with me in Dusseldorf, huh? <laughs> and that was an invitation that every artist at that time was dying for. It was extraordinary, even not least of all, because Philip Morris was sponsoring the show in the opening, and there were girls in fishnet stockings <laughs> offering cigarettes to everyone. Those are the days. Those are the days indeed. <laughs> and uh, George, you and I are both former smokers, so that would have been a paradise <laughs> indeed. Well, I've been lucky enough to be coming to your studio for many years, and always on the table are models, models of shows that may already be in. Um, may already be up or models of shows that are to be realised and it's as true today even in lockdown as it is at any other occasion where I've been here as well as these very important publications so tell, tell me about this, these models here we just thought that it was the end of the world with the virus arriving yeah? awful. strangely we, we gathered all of the information and material for making new pictures at the end of last year and then in the early new year, we designed a huge group of pictures, 85 pictures, which we titled The New Normal Pictures. We tried to find a way of being an English way of saying existentialist. Mm. And we thought new normal. Now, of course, it's become a common phrase associated with the corona. And we, we, we feel very excited. It's not the end of the world. We have a show on in Lucano at the moment. We have a yep. show coming up in Reykjavik. We have one coming up in one Stuttgart. One in I see. Just finishing. It's quite exciting because we only we like making art for the public. We always did that. Even when our slogan is art for all, or go kill better shit and George account and all that stuff. That's all to provoke thought, we always say. Because we have to provoke thought. That's the only way that an artist can do, to be different. And so we always try to create our own model. We create a Gilbert and George world. Every time you go into a show, what is a Gilbert and George world? That's it, how we think, how we feel, how we behave, how, whatever the morals. We believe in morality all the time. The moral moral art, dimension. moral, moral dimension. dimension. Huh? The moral dimension. The moral dimension is very important for us. How to behave, because we know that we don't believe in the morality of the church or the Pope or anybody like that. And we don't believe in the morality of the dictators either. So we only be believe that the human person that has to, has to make ways to behave themselves in a modern way. Well, I remember your, your incredible saying, ban religion. I mean, you have met <laughs> your master, case in point, but you have many wonderful, wonderful, what I would call sayings. Um, but ban religion is, I think, one of the most simple and direct possible uh, phrases of our time. It has a, it has a power as uh, we sit uh, here. It's ext the world. extraordinary. And we, 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 even remember, we even remember just after creating it, we had a, a knock at our front door. It was very unusual because most people ring the bell when we were around. And we answered the door, and there was an elderly clergyman 
and we were astonished. He must have been in his 80s. And he said, I don't want to trouble you, gentlemen. I just want, want to tell you something. He said, I, I'm uh, over 80 now. I've still got my congregation. But I saw that thing you did called banned religion. It's marvellous. <laughs> and he said, thank you very much. Perhaps you could explain. He said, very simply, he said, my congregation are very nice. They're all very nice people. And many of them are friends of mine. And, and uh, I see them every week, of course. He said, they're very nice. And they're all very religious. He said, but I don't really want them to be religious. I want them to be good. Huh. And very moving, moving moment. Very and moving the other moment. banner, decriminalize sex. Yes. That's quite an e extraordinary e one. Yes. Because it doesn't matter what we believe is all finished. Just go a little what towards different countries, South America or India or Russia or stuff. Sexuality or all the Muslim world, it just they hang you. Yes. For a lot of stuff that you is normal. Yes. It's a it's a shame on all of us that we haven't behaved behave well enough to convince people that you shouldn't leave people in an unfurnished cell not knowing whether you're going to be executed for having sex. It's an no. extraordinary I mean, thing. It, what's so extraordinary? We're, we're working on that every, every day to, to try. To, we think we're so privileged and we always tell our young friends that it really is just Europe, North America, Australasia and a few little outposts, Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong. Otherwise it's all a sheer terror. Mm. The whole of Latin America is in the grips of the church or dictators. Or drug barons, yeah. Russia and China are both dictatorships. Yeah. How privileged we are! Yes. We can walk out of our front door. We don't need an identity card. Yeah. We can walk from here to Scotland. Mm. Not that anyone would want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the principle, at least. <laughs> but it's very interesting. I mean, before we get on to talking about the models, which I'm dying to do, I also want to um, have a moment to discuss this incredible new body of work, 85 new pictures, which you've, I've had the enormous privilege. The new normal pictures. The new normal pictures. And, you know, when you talk about, um, you know, in a way, the tragedies of the virus, the impl implications, and also the times in which we live, which are on the one hand so incredibly sophisticated, but also so, so... Tragic. Tragic. And, and it can be destroyed in one second. Yes. But it's quite interesting because it didn't affect us, uh, not at all, nothing. Because we always lived like this before. Mm. No. We never changed. All <laughs> artists work from home. <laughs> yeah. We never changed. And only that now, instead of uh, all what we miss about the pandemic is we cannot see waiters anymore. Well, waiters. indeed, yeah. your, 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 restaurant, your restaurant here is the... We, is have our, we have our souvenir photographs. Yes, you have your souvenir photographs. So come, let's look at these. So this is the restaurant where you've eaten every single day, um, up until the lockdown, of course. Tolga, Vesel, Phoebe, Mustafa. And you, you took photographs of them. The last night. The last day yeah. we took photographs. And uh, then we had some, they took, uh, some takeaway for one week and then we stopped even there. And we have this amazing artwork that we did because of all the covers of all the dishes and they are assigned like... These are personal notes from the chef. No, it's fantastic. And so the picture, that picture will be called Takeaway. So, and then before we go on to the, the new normal pictures, in the studio you've got objects that you've collected because you are great collectors um, of extraordinary different range of things, furniture, um, our, our ceramics. Our collection is the 19th century, really. Yes. The, the Christopher uh, Dresser. The big beginning of design as we know it today. I think this is an o overflow. Of overflow of different stuff, but we have a, probably one of the biggest collections of the 19th century, what they call design furniture, vases and, and fabrics, all the, what you can have. Really? And from, Chris, from Pugin up to what you call Christopher the Dresser, Dresser and uh, and uh, uh, what called uh, Waterhouse, all Waterhouse and all the people, and Godwin. Well, these chairs, I remember, the first exhibition for the opening of Ely House, um, uh, Gallery Today is Redbacks London Gallery. It was a fantastic Ely room, which is the 18th century room, the earliest room in the house. They looked wonderful. The, and they looked spectacular. And these, of course, were, came from your collection in uh, amazing early black and white photographs from the 60s, I think. The very beginning. Yeah. The very, very beginning. The drunken ones. The drunken ones, exactly. Yes, you see, we were there. Yeah, indeed you <laughs> were, absolutely. <laughs> it was the only furniture we had. We just had two we chairs. We had two chairs, and we did morning light, morning light on Art for All that was done in us sitting in these chairs in the front of the front mm -hmm. room, and the view from outside. It was extraordinary. 
So, so this th this floor, the floor of the house you live, you've been living in for ever since you be began when you were yes. at St Martin's. Early days. Amazing. Really there. So Reykjavik, and this is the right. Great Exhibition, is it? Yes, it's, it's, it's part of the tour that started in Arl yes. and went on to. It was Arl, then it was to Sweden, to mm. Stockholm, then you went to Norway, that you were there, it, yes. then you went to Switzerland, Zurich, yeah. then yeah. you go to Reykjavik, then it's going to fr Frankfurt, and then it's going probably to Italy if you told, you mentioned. Yes, our dear friend friends. Of yours. Yes, in the Triennale. And uh, Hans Ole, he's just mad. He just wants the show to go on forever. <laughs> Well, as we know, <laughs> if that's what he wants, that's what will happen. Mm -hmm. And so it should, because it's... And, and uh, it's easy to make. Yes. We are very able to make shows ourselves. We are able, able to... What, what simplicity is our motto? Simplicity. Simple. We, we always say we have two main privileges. Number one privilege is to leave the house in the morning, come through the little backyard, into this studio, and say exactly what we want in our pictures. Yes. We don't have, we're not beholding to anyone or any authority. We're entirely free. Mm -hmm. And the second privilege is to get those pictures together and take them out into the world. Yeah. It's a great privilege to be able to take 40 pictures to Reykjavik and put them on the wall for everyone yeah. to see if they want. Even but then privilege. we had another group of shows going on, like in, 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 in uh, what do you call it? in Finland, that mm -hmm. was a different one, and that one went to Locarno. It's extraordinary, like it's made there with 60,000 people viewing our pictures. But it I mean, really, you even if we have these amazing subjects that <laughs> everybody is excited by it, all the young people, they all remember the subject that they like, yeah. because they are searching for the same stuff. Yes. They are searching that the inner side is like us. Yes. You are not different. Yeah. It's but a great privilege because you can, you can have huge audiences for pictures. Eh? Mm -hmm. if, if you're a novelist today and publish a novel, it's likely to be two or three thousand copies in it. It's nothing com compared with fine art. But I mean, you are, if you, I mean, if you say Gilbert and George to a taxi driver, they know who you are. You're incredibly famous, don't you? Here in London. Yeah, exactly. and not only in London. Yeah. It's an it's a international thing, but I think one of the things which is... We always say to ourselves, if it works on a postcard, then it works. If our artwork works on a postcard, then it's fine. But you have, you have a series of exhibitions also about the postcards, I think. As we did, I think, yeah, well, yeah, we should have put it yeah. uh, It was exciting as well. Yes, and making catalogue is quite important for us. We always did that at the beginning. We made every single catalogue of, the, of all our shows that we did ourselves. Let's, let's, look, at, let's look at this. So this... this the right the, of it catalogue. So this had, this show, the Great Exhibition, started in Nile, as you say, and for there, I think it was eight bodies of work, or nine bodies of work that you focused yes, on. Yes, yes. And, um, in, and then also the Phacosophy. Yes, which is... I'm surprised <laughs> you find it difficult to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> I know, just like I didn't rec recognise the drug, the drug packets either. Yeah. Um, we have the Godology coming up as well, which is you? also exciting. Oh, fantastic. Which is more extensive than the Phacosophy. And Believe. Wow. And we have the Believing World. The Believe, because inside Belief is a lie. Hmm. We can show that with the camera. So yeah. let's let just explain what the Farkovsky is. It's, it's, it's probably our first very, very big literary work in that way. And we think it's something that is so simple in the world. The, the word fuck and fucking and all around that stuff is so general and so useful in that way. You can use it for anything. Yes. And so there yeah, are... It has great use. There are series... Of, so there are... How many words? Roughly, 100, 200? 4,000. 4,000. 4,000 words. 4,000 fucks. 4,000 fucks. <laughs> 4, All with the word fuck in it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the so it's very liberating. Yes, That's course. what it is, because everybody is what they call, we're all told, don't say that word. Even we never say it. Don't you? No, never. We would never swear, of course not. We never did that. We're not, we're not middle class. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must put my hand up to the most <laughs> terrible middle class behaviour. So, going back to the catalogues, this is available. You can have the most incredible catalogue. This is, you, my goodness me, it, I have one at home. It's very, very important, very significant, very comprehensive. Enormous about interview. 
enormous interview. So if you buy this, you're going to be really well informed about your work. But the point is that people can buy it for a fraction of the cost of what these books would normally That's very important. Cost. We and used to subsidise it, but now we are running out of money, so we are <laughs> not doing that anymore. But we used to subsidise completely, like the two volumes, no? that we did f when we did the teach show, mm -hmm. it was £40 for these 10 kilo catalogues. And that was a thousand pictures that you had yeah. in that catalogue? No, 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 we are mm -hmm. 4,000 4, from it. 4,000? Which is sort of the large percentage of the people who stop us on the street and, s and say, I love your art. We say, oh, which exhibition was that? Well, I've, I've never seen an exhibition. You've seen catalogues at friends' houses or something. And also the posters, of course, which you always Yes. Have. And so this is what we call, every time, when we make the, the artwork one to one, first we do the, the design about 10%. Mm -hmm. And we take, we control the, 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 uh, the cupboard where we have the negatives, because every time we do a new group for pictures, we take a lot of maybe 10,000 negatives. And they are all uh, what they call digital now. Yeah, they didn't used to be there. So they all have a number underneath that we can call up in the computer and make a composition. And the composition is 10%. Wow. And then when it, that is finished, we are doing the one to one. And then we work on it. And you see here we do, here we have this piece called uh, Bagman. Bagman. And these are what they call testing sheets. If we are satisfied with the colors or not. If that, if you want something darker, we can still go in and open and do something. That's extraordinary. It is extraordinary. And this this figure here in the, in the sleeping bag. This young, I think young man in the sleeping yeah. bag. Yes, oh, yeah. we found him one one morning. I think. We, and the on biscuits. The, way to get our the biscuits are fantastic. Somebody gave him a packet of biscuits, which I think is very touching. Very touching. And he was sleeping in Fournier Street. Just just off Fournier Street, yeah. yeah. Right. You're my call. We don't know where he is now. No. We don't know whether his mother knows where he is now. But it is a subject. We can it's show there's a box of what it goes a cupboard yes, where we have the Because also what I'd like you to see see here. You see these are yes. all the images. 2010, 2013. Amazing. These are the basis Amazing. Pictures. You see the ones that are yellow are the ones that we use. The, the other ones. Yeah. yeah. Extraordinary. And you are the... Here are the bags. Yes. Here are the bags. Here are the balloons. Here are the shovels. Here are the spades. The seaside uh, spades. And they're black and white because it's... They are in colour, but we turn them into black and white because we can make it more artificial and more powerful. I we think full colour, the normal full colour from the full full visible. Camera is more invisible than how we make pictures. Yes. And we know that because if, if when people have their cars here and the police ask them what the colour they say, um, uh, yeah. they don't know the colour of their own car. Yeah. Very few people know the colour of their own front door. Yeah. It's a very strange thing. Isn't it interesting? But, but you see, use of colour is more just the easy. amount of contact you. No, but it's but you are the most efficient, the most efficient people I know, bar none. We're not quite everything, as soon as we everything numbered, everything logged, everything filed. Can you see. These are al alarm, alarm bells in London, yes. rusty and wrecked ones, yes. different subject shapes. Absolutely fantastic. It's always more research than we actually need. Yes. So out of that, out of this, that will be one picture or how many pictures would no, you all make? All. I mean, this is all the new images that we took. I see. Yeah, they are all the parts. And we are going through and choosing. Hmm? When we do a design, then we choose which one we want to use. No? These yeah. two became the basis for the picture ground floor. You see this one? Yes. And these are the ones of us in it. We have the ones with the outside different materials, other people, mm -hmm. what they call skies or streets or local ones. All subject, in subjects. These are the us, most of them. And you take the pictures of each yes, other. Everyone, nobody, yes, everybody. Nobody pressed that button. No. Except mm -hmm. that's very important. Very. They, for they would haunt us. Yes. Forever. Yes. Yes. But also, you have the control. You're the artist, so you know exactly what you want. We know what we want. Only, only we know what we, we know want. What we want. <laughs> and you print everything here. Yeah. Yes. All in house. Amazing. It, uh, done by us and our friend Yui Gavin, who is became in, in what called the most important person of our life. No, I can imagine. And so if do we you know Yui, Yui, Yui Gang is from mainland China, 
And he had his very important birthday this year. Oh! Two weeks ago. Which birthday do you think that was? 20. 40. 50? No! You were you getting no. his 50? Oh my goodness. And how long has he worked with you? 20 years. Because yes. oh, I said 10. Ch- Rody asked me and I said 20 10. 20 years. No. And we met him in 93. And how did you meet him? 93 in Shanghai. In Shanghai? Well, we, we had, had, we had, had a great show. exhibition. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <coughs> and I just want the camera to look, not go into, but just look through that doorway here, because that's another it's very... very we can show the... Can you? Oh, the yes, great. But, but maybe not so much there. No. Yeah. Um, catch the, lady, catch the ladies on the way out. Yes, catch the ladies. Look. Um, the 1956. Mid-20s, they're very good. Very good. Think? Very. And they were... So just well, as popular, yes. popular. I mean, George is a bigger collector than us because uh, he does. He collects books and, yes. and bo- we have children's books. We have 19th century what they call visual art books. Adult literature. Adult literature. Adult literature. Adult literature. A very interesting very collection. Very Absolutely. Yeah. And so many collections. So let's have a quick, a peek, quick peek in there because um, I'm dying to look at the, the other model. So this is... You see, this is the bag of the new, instead of Fakosophy, this is the, the beginning, godology. Of the beginning of the godology. So, oh my God, how exciting. God help some. <laughs> God's a palaver. It's very interesting, people say, oh, what a palaver. Yes. It's a Portuguese word, you know, it's nothing to do with it. Is it? English, yeah. God'll never know. God at your door. God's He's n- not God. God's not in. Very good. <laughs> very, very good. good. God's not it. Get lost, God. <laughs> God and the Tories. God in Soho. <laughs> Amazing. It's all true, isn't it? Yes. It's all true. But where do you get them from? Thousands. We just keep blank cards in our pockets and write them down as we... Where's oh, oh, yeah. All done by us. Great. Amazing. And you see here, this is the most important to share. This is the corner where we create the designs for the pictures. This is... This is... We have a special computer that's quite very, very powerful. Can you put the bag man on you again? And this is the new pictures you've been working on, yeah. the new normal pictures. And this is Yuli Gang, who's just had his birthday, who's <laughs> absolutely key to, key to life. They don't believe you're 50 at all. They all no, think I say 20. Think they all think you're 65. <laughs> <laughs> That's a server. Oh my God. And there's the final picture of a bag man. Amazing. We think it's a, a sort of reconstruction of the Union flag. Yes. In a m- modern way. And you were saying earlier how the, the original pi- picture had seams on the, on the sleeping yes, bag. Yes, the sleeping bag has two s- sewn seams which enable us to introduce the red down the middle of the white bag. And you were saying also that it's, you know, it's almost like the Union Jack. Or it's St. George's. it's like a reconstruction of yes. the Union flag, you could say. Yeah. And it's, fr- it's very sad and very beautiful, but yes. we don't know who he is, yes. we don't know where he is, yes. we don't know whether his family knew where he is, but he's part of everyday life, yes. all over the world, yes? yeah. all it's, over the world. It's quite extraordinary, our way of making pictures, because it's near to our brain, mm. because we have all in the computer, we have these thousands of images that we can call up like that, and make a design, a design is very near to it, and very, what they call, complex and fast, and we are able to think what you are doing it, make the composition that you want, it's an extraordinary way of making pictures. We think. So before you ha- before you worked in this way, for example, I remember your show at the Haywood in 1987. Oh, very powerful. Yeah, I mean, you were the school group, did you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I I was it was unbelievably shocking. And the reason it was shocking for many many reasons. But the power of your pictures in that space, which is such a difficult space anyway, um, it's a brutal space. It's unrelenting. I love it. Very very tough. I agree. So do I. Have it, I work there, but still, it is very very tough. But also the subject matter. It was like you, artists didn't make pictures, particularly at that point in time, of the world around them. No. They, just, they just didn't. And there you were with the people who lived in this area, your friends, people from the street. It, it was really a kind of... We remember it very well. It was so successful. It had the biggest audience for, I think, for 40 years. No? Yeah. For a living artist. living artist, not dead ones. 
Yes. And this is the machine that we use to make them. You see? Really? This is the old technology. technology. Do you see the railway, oh. the railway tracks? Yes. This is enlarged. You see this enlarged oh. that we were projecting on the wall. wall. No. This is a, and now, 20 years, we are on this kind of technology. Yes. Yeah, but nobody knows where we stopped this and where we start. It's a seamless changeover. Really. But so, w when we worked together, when you did that incredible I show the second time, the Dirty Words, which is just, just so wonderful. It's great. Well, it was a, an enormous privilege for us to have it. You were met, you were using the old technology. So, in, fact, in other words, this technology for yes. those pictures. They were done in the kitchen. Not, not the one in the, the one. Yes, Dirty they were done in, in the, the kitchen. kitchen. And then you went into a kind of lockdown of your own to learn how to, I think, work this new technology. Even, even this we had to learn. We had to learn this one yeah. because you see, we had we don't have the boys. What what are called boys? The boys all the boys are like a the like boys a, like a children's Christmas present. And because the ten years of all our work was done in the kitchen. No. Yeah, because including the dirty words, yeah. including the dirty words in the kitchen with the sink, not a proper. Yes. Not a proper, proper but do you remember? I mean, at the time, the dirty words pictures can't. I suppose probably that was the worst. Um, and somebody said to you, you were asked the question, "What is the dirty word of today?" That was in two thousand two, and you immediately, without missing a beat, said "pedophile." Did we? Well, yes. I forgot that. It's probably yes. true. Yes, it I'm was. Sure it's because true. paedophilia at that point was yeah. really becoming a tremendous focus. Yeah, extraordinary. And now probably conservative. No, it's, <laughs> yes. no, it's racist. Racist. Yes. Well, yes. Um, I, I want to. Yeah, we are the panels of right. Can we? Right mm -hmm. and dry. Yeah, this is very exciting. This is the uh, natural panels of dry. This is extraordinary because this construction was done when we did used to do everything larger because we had to dry them here. This is and the same rack we had made. Yeah. Really? Yeah. From and you can. Because they were stained with dye, yeah? they had to but dry it. Look at these colours. I mean, that's what's so completely captivating the, the, the vividness of the colours and the composition, the palette. It's very it's difficult to do figuration as an artist today. Yes, yes. Except we, because they all use the negative in some way, but they are not able to be what you call free like us And honest and using. Yes. They're all painting photographs. Yes. But they're so vivid. That. Look at this colour. Look at this palette. Unbelievable. Just the and tiny corner of the drug bag, you see? Yes. And the gradation, too. And when you see them in the flesh, they are so powerful. They're so saturated, is the word I want. We love the drug or bags because they come. each one comes from a, a person yes. that has a name and a family, and maybe dead, maybe alive, maybe yeah. in prison. Yes. They're like chewing gums. They're yes. evidence of people, human yes. beings. And in also they have patterns on the, on the yes. plastic, too. Different, different designs. Patterns, yes, different it's design. like a tonscape. Yes. Because they are in front of our door. Yes. That's what we see. Yes. You open our door, there it is, everything what we want. No? The de detritus of human life. Yes. Yeah. It's extraordinary. Even because we think London is global. Okay. We don't have to go anywhere. It's global. But you, uh, even though you take your walks, and I think during lockdown, and the intense period of lockdown, you were walking around your your studio table um, yeah. as a, as a, as a um, exercise. practice exercise. We can, we can do one, one Oh yes, really? Oh, great. But before you do that, can we go and look at the other model? Because that, the, the architect of that is really you see the architect of the big, uh, what you call, Meyerhoff exhibition up there. Yes, That's the, the biggest one. Yes. Which yeah, I came to the, the yeah. oh, It was extraordinary. Wasn't extraordinary. It? it was amazing. Because Even the layout was designed by us. Was it? Oh, yeah. I should say it was a, a show curated by Hans Ulrich Oberst, who's artistic director of the Southern Eye Gallery, and Daniel Bionbaum, who then was the director of the Moderna Museum in Stockholm, and both of whom know you very well and they also know you yes. very well. And that's very important, we believe. A lot of people say no. Mm. But they, Hans Ulrich, what is genius, is able to say yes. Yes. It was yes. very exciting to exhibit in Arl because we found out some things about Van Gogh that we didn't know. Um, one, one extraordinary thing was that somebody told us that when he lived there, which was only for two years, he was very poor, he was not, not very well, he had no money, everything was wrong, but all of the good people of the town, the mayor, the judge, the schoolmaster, the o owner of the local shops and things, they all got together to sign a document to say this man must leave town. Really? Yeah. Extraordinary. Yeah. And even today, a lady who lives in Arles said that a lot of people in 
a lot of well-to-do people in art think that the, the people exaggerated this reputation of Van Gogh. He wasn't a very good painter, you know, and in any case, he wasn't French. Oh, no, well, that, of course, is the biggest Pe people, crime. People today saying that. Extraordinary. Ah, well, we, uh, we, uh, we had a version like that in our street when the vicar tried to get rid of us. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. In some way. Oh, my goodness. And people, what do you call it, using us. What? Reverend Eddie Stray was a big friend of Mary Whitehouse. Of course, I remember. He was a friend of Mary Whitehouse. They ran the Festival of Light. Yes, absolutely. But was he vicar of um, the Hawksmoor Church? Yes. Because of course you have this incredible yeah. Hawksmoor Church yeah. at the yeah. end of the street. Now this, here we go. This is so. It's quite usual for you to have two, three, four exhibitions on yeah, globally think, at yeah. any one time. I think we did more than one hundred museum shows. Wow. That's extraordinary. And each project has this level of attention. It will always have a model. You'll always do a catalogue. Very often you do posters. For the Southern High Gallery Dirty Words pictures, you signed goodness knows how many pictures. I mean, exciting. it was absolutely extraordinary. And the appetite. People, you're rock stars. People oh, want to see you, talk to you, hear what you have to say. So tell us about this. And we have a friend of ours who comes in and does it, uh, what a piece of uh, architect. He does them, we, are, we, we do the installation on, uh, what a call it, like an architect drawing, yes. with the height and everything where it should be. You don't have to do anything, just in advance. Amazing. Every measurement is done here. Amazing. Indeed, also. So, is it as easy as it is? Yeah. It's in the show at the moment. It's in a very beautiful 18th century townhouse. They we love it very much with these wooden ceilings. You see, it's like kind of castle or whatever it is. And, and they the, work. And this has a painted ceiling, which is yeah. so. It's this cool. is a very beautiful antique villa, which is a good yeah. contrast to our pictures. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And that this this group of pictures, how many how many groups of work in this show? Because it's not uh, part of the great exhibition. No, I think they work like fifty or something. Yeah, fifty pictures. We said, what a beautiful lake in, in uh, Lucano, and they said, yes. They said, uh, President Obama has a house there, and he entertains George Clooney. No. Well, that's <laughs> next to uh, what they call Lucano. I think it is not what they call it. What's this book? Oh, 19th Century Design. Fantastic. It is my Michael White. Michael White, we are biggest expert uh, of the 19th century. Okay. And he did the, the, the best book. You know, and you see how the design show? This is the leftover from Zurich. We have all these packets. We, we have packets of all the shows that were in, in Arles. And so these are the leftovers because it's a quite a smaller show. And they have a little sign in the core of each picture which tells you where they are. Who whether they're with the Rupex or White Cube or belong to how us or Sonderbahn. How fantastic. Or to keep, or to keep today as Rupex, I should add into that to keep life distinguished group. Um, WC, what's that? The laboratory. White Cube. <laughs> oh, White Cube, of course. Oh, dear. Nearly right. <laughs> Nearly right. <laughs> <laughs> Warm. Oh. Jane will kill me. <laughs> And tell me what this just looking at this table, the sport. You see the daily paper. Daily, daily paper. Yeah. Fantastic. That was very good this week. Some somebody sent us this. Looks like the same. Oh yes, yeah. look, look alike. So I must let's just show it to, to, to underscore how incredibly famous you are. Um, there there there's a pastiche of I think the health advisors, um, the current yes. health advisors to the government yes. and Gilbert and George. Has anyone noticed, as I have, the extraordinary resemblance between Professor Chris Whitty and Sir Patrick Valance and the distinguished modern artist, quite right, Gilbert and George? Are they by any chance related? I think we should be told. Brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. And yeah. now... And that's it's very important. This is our, that's our kitchen. We use the fridge, the only fridge that we have. We use it for champagne only. And now we are what we call Champagne is out. Champagne is out. Now we have the ham, the cheese, and the what's called the carrots, the salad, everyday cat salads, prawns. Fantastic. It's horrible eating at home. The crumbs everywhere. I dislike it. Yes. <laughs> I should say it. that Gilbert and George have never boiled a kettle in their house. They've never. Um, they don't cook. 
and they never um, do anything except eat outside. This is a fantastic idea of poster that we signed from Carlo. Amazing. And did you sign these? We were not there. But yeah. We couldn't go this yes, time. No, of course. And here it says, the Guardian, Gilbert and George say, don't get it. Yes. Indeed, don't good. get it. May I thank you both very much indeed for your generosity, for allowing us to see your studio, to see your amazing exhibitions you're working on, and also to see an extraordinary body of work. Very nice uh, to see you, that, um, uh, we, I can't wait to see in the galleries. And really, big thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I'm so glad to find you so well. And as always, the youngest artists I know, always right. enthusiastic, always excited. Thank, thank you, you very, very much, much indeed. Thank, thank you. you. Give us that together. Yes, yes. indeed. And everybody, all your friends out there. <laughs> yeah, but of course I should add, they send much love to you. Thank you. Now, um, ladies and gentlemen, you can re-watch the previous Teas with Julia on our IGTV or our YouTube channel. In our gallery at the Marais in Paris, we have an exhibition of work by Jules de Panancourt called There Are More Eyes Than Leaves on the Trees as well as Dimensions of Reality, Female Minimal, is on display at our Paris Gallery in Pantin. Next Saturday at 11am, I will be having tea with Nicholas Cullinan, who took up his position as Director of the National Portrait Gallery in spring 2015, following his role as Curator of Modern and Contemporary Art at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Prior to this, from 2007 to 2013, Nicholas was Curator of international modern art at Tate Modern, where he co-curated an exhibition of Matisse cutouts with Sir Nicholas Sirota in 2014. Nicholas Cullinan received his BA, MA and PhD in art history from the Courtauld Institute of Art in London. And in 2006 to 2007, he held the Hiller Ribe International Fellowship at the Guggenheim Museums in Bilbao, New York and Venice. I very much look forward to seeing you next Saturday at 11am. Thanks very much for joining us.